coming up on the DMT One to One Show, episode 69, on the 6th of August 2014, an interview with uh, David Dufresne, CEO of a band Zugel, a service that provides musicians with everything they need to build a great website. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One Show and uh, this week uh, it's a real pleasure to welcome David Dufresne, the CEO of the company Band Zugel. So hi David and thanks for joining me from Montreal, right? How's it going? Thanks, it's going well. It's a pretty warm and sunny day so far in Montreal, which is a rare treat and, uh, and I'm, I'm honored and happy to be on the show. It's great to have you. And so uh, today we're going to talk about a company, of course. Uh, it's a company that has a, a relatively long history. So, uh, you know, I want to sort of explore it a little bit and also talk about the latest news, uh, uh, of course, in due, in, in due time. Uh, first of all, uh, what is Banzugo all about for people that may not have heard about the company? Banzugal is a, is many things, but we are um, a website platform for bands and musicians. Right. So uh, we're like first and foremost, we're a destination. If you want to build a full website for your band or for yourself as an artist, your full .dot com, um, you come to Banzugal. We make it, it we make it extremely easy for you to do that yourself. So you don't need to code anything. You don't need to hire anyone. We have a lot of themes that you can use or you can sort of customize your own theme using your own graphics, your own artwork, your own fonts even. And then uh, all the features you need for a band website are all, like most of them are built in. Yeah. So things like music players, uh, photo galleries, we have our own uh, blogging platform or blogging feature. We even have a little podcast feature. Nice. Uh, we have analytics. We have uh, events, calendars, uh, with tons of you know options that are thought of for specifically for musicians. Sure. Uh, we also have commerce options. So if you want to sell your digital music, uh, if you want to sell your physical CDs, vinyl, any merch. Uh, we also added recently if you want to sell any digital files, so yeah. not just music, if you want to sell sheet music, nice. uh, beats, loops, um, video, anything you can sell through the platform. And we don't take any cut of yourselves, so that's a, that's a pretty nice thing. And we also have a mailing list um, Feature, yeah. component to a platform, so you can manage your, your, uh, your email list. You can send out regular newsletters or things like geo-targeted emails, and all of that comes in a package. Um, we have three plans, 10, 15, 20 dollars a month. So it ends up being a pretty cool, uh, affordable, easy way, but also powerful and professional yeah. way for an artist to establish the hub for their web presence. Sure. And so let's, let's uh, uh, trail back to the history of the company. It's been around for quite some time, you know, especially considering internet years as opposed to yeah. normal years. And so can you uh, sort of tell us a little bit, bit more about how it got started and how it evolved? It actually got started 10 years ago. We're turning wow. 10 uh, at the end of the summer. Uh, I'm not the founder. I joined the company a little bit, a little bit uh, more than four years ago. Yeah. Uh, the founder is my partner, Chris, uh, Chris Vincent, who's now our CTO. And the, the short version of the story is that Chris used to, in the late 90s, he played in a grunge band. Here in Montreal, played bass. He uh, also learned uh, how to build websites. And the website he had built for his band... Um, help them get signed by uh, one of the biggest labels here in Canada. Nice. Uh, so they did a record, they toured, uh, lived, you know, the rock star life for, for a couple of years. And, uh, and then the band broke up. And uh, the label, actually the group of labels, hired Chris as a webmaster for all of their acts. Yeah. And um, and that that was that was a bit much. So Chris built a console so that either the, the bands or the managers could go and update their websites themselves. And a lot of people started saying, "Hey, I could I could use this for for my own band." Yeah. And that's how he got the idea of launching Banzoogle. He started it on his own, uh, got a small loan from the owner of the label. Uh, and, you know, after a while, um, hired his first employee and, uh, and, um, and started getting more, more users and more paying users. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, 10 years later, we're a team of about 20. 
Uh, we have uh, we have now a little bit over twenty two thousand uh, bands and artists that use the platform. Wow. Um, pay, that's paying users. We also yeah. we always have like four or five thousand trials going on, and um, and we, we've remained. One of the reasons uh, I think that explains our longevity is that we've always remained independent. Yeah. We've never got outside funding, so we've been able to grow the company very organically. Yeah. At our own rate, and now we're we're in a very healthy. Uh, profitable position and, and you know, we keep growing at a pretty good pace and um, that's awesome and so, having a lot of fun yeah absolutely and, and you're based in mostly Montreal still we're uh, we're one of those companies where everyone works remotely yeah so both Chris and I are, are kind of pretty further away but further apart but we're both in Montreal uh, we have two other people in Montreal, but then we have people. We have uh, one of our developers actually based in Leeds, oh, cool. in uh, nice. in the UK. Uh, we have a guy in Spain, in Madrid, and then we have people all over Canada. I mean, Halifax, Ottawa, uh, Sudbury. Two two guys in British Columbia. We have two people in California, one in Massachusetts, and uh, our lead designer is in Vermont. And, yeah, uh, I, well, think I was that, Taking the benefit of uh, online, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 and we're yeah we're a very modern company, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that's that's great. And uh, you know, if you get somebody on the other side of Canada, it's almost like having them on the other side of the world, <laughs> given yeah. all the distances that yeah. you got over there. So, uh, no, it's it's great. It's great challenge today, and I, I wanted to sort of uh, delve into the 2.0 uh, release that you did last year. So I'm always interested yeah. in seeing how companies that have been running for a while. Uh, sort of realize what the shortcomings maybe of the service are and how they go about either developing a 2.0 like you did or doing incremental changes uh, until everything is fixed. So how did you go about releasing it and, and sort of restructuring how the, how the site was built? We redid everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> like the uh, and 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 when Chris started the company, and, and keep in mind that's back in, like he officially launched it in late 2003. So uh, he had started working on it, I think, in 2002. He used a framework and a, and a programming language called Cold Fusion, right? Which which back then was a good idea, but it's a language that didn't evolve and didn't end, ended up not getting supported. Um, so when I joined one of the first decisions we made was to uh, completely redo all of our back end right. uh, and change our database infrastructure, change um, all of our server infrastructure, and we ended up also redoing all of our front ends, our control panel, even our own like admin just for ourselves Pretty and painful. support system. We redid the whole thing. Uh, we, we, we thought it would take about a year uh, and we decided that that meant fe like feature freeze on the old platform and like keeping minimal. Uh, we own like we only had one guy basically supporting the old platform yeah. while the rest of the team was uh, completely focused on new platform. It's a one year project that turned into a two and a half year project. And uh, and then at the end of last year, we migrated, you know, our, our you know, close to 20,000 websites and their owners to the new platform and finally completed that project um, uh, late last year. Uh, we still have to finish our own website, which we should launch our new web, our new our own website will get relaunched in um, in a week or two. Great. And uh, we also have one last big part of that project, which is redoing our control panel in more of a WYSIWYG yeah. way. So it's going to be um, you're going to be able to edit your website right on the website, more or less. And uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and now, now it's great because now we have a great base. Uh, Adding new features and new options is is something that now our developers can do super quickly. Yeah. Uh, building new themes. Our goal is to have at least one new theme each week. Wow. And um, and uh, yeah, so that's pretty exciting. That's cool stuff. And, and, and so let's talk about a couple of the uh, acquisitions that you guys have made as well, uh, which are really interesting. Yeah. So the first one was uh, uh, back in uh, when was it? Uh, let me just double check my notes. Uh, it was last sometime. Uh, it was last year when you acquired no Northway Northway Media. Right. Yeah, we acquired uh, even before that. We acquired um, another company called Savy. Right. And then we acquired Noteway, and both bo both were pretty small acquisitions. Uh, to be honest, they were both companies that were that were sort of. Um, 
sort of looking for solutions and uh, with their with their founders trying to exit. Yeah. So we we basically acquired their customers list and then migrated them to Banzoogle. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, last year, yeah, I think a year ago, we acquired OneSheet. Yeah. Um, for those not familiar with OneSheet, OneSheet is a kind of a basic website builder where you build a one-page website that then pulls in data from your SoundCloud, YouTube, Bandcamp, Instagram, like whatever, uh, Songkick, Bands in Time, whatever external services you're using. Yeah. So, um, so OneSheet, I, I don't know, I'm... I'm I expect your next question is what what our projects are for one sheet. I mean, yeah, I, I was wondering sort of how you went about because I know that uh, you have a lot of interesting things going on when it comes to uh, you know direct communications with fans on on Banzoogle, including you know uh, the ability to have sort of like a fan club type situation on the site as well. And I was wondering whether any of those sort of uh, features that may come from from one sheet or even a noteway sort of made their way into 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 that build. Not really. I mean, um, most of our, most of the features we built, or most of the features we have, like we do have some, some features that are kind of that are kind of old school. Yeah. Like the definitely the fan forums are, are something that used to be very popular, uh, maybe you know uh, six seven years ago. But we with the advance of Facebook and social media in general, uh, it's not something that newer artists or newer bands want to use though we do have a lot of members that still have pretty active forums on their websites yeah. uh, same with the guest book <laughs> like, and, and, and those are all things that we we, we want to keep because uh, when we when we talk about removing them we get a lot of pushback from existing users for, yeah. for whom you know the guest book is very important so um, and, and, and all the features that we add to our roadmap and work on all come from user requests yeah so really our, our, our users are our research and development um, what we did uh, get though from from mostly from Savy is some uh, some of the themes they had some of the yeah. templates they were using we reused a lot of them they had some pretty cool modern modern looking um, uh, themes which uh, while we were doing the big uh, redesign of our back end allowed us to have a few new fresh themes uh, included into our platform sure. Um, but yeah, the the one sheet product is something that we were hoping to rebuild earlier, but now yeah. we're finally getting to it, and um, cool. and there's actually some Banzoogle features that we plan to plug into one sheet. Awesome, nice. So uh, so that's the plan there, because the basic one sheet product is going to be a free way for you to build a simple one page website. Yeah. But then some of the um, some of the Banzoogle features, so so things like the mailing list, things like the commerce options, uh, maybe the blogging feature, kind of and maybe away. things like the forums and stuff like that. We're we're kind of going to offer uh, à la carte, yeah, so that people can pick and choose what they want for their website. Awesome. That's our plan so far. It's That's something great. that we're we're specking right now. And and so uh, talking about music and merch, I mean, there, we've seen a lot of movement in that space in the last sort of twelve to eighteen months. How did you approach that part? Because uh, you know, uh, uh, artists are able to sell merchandise uh, uh, on the on Banzugo as well. Is it all fulfilled at their end? Have you thought about whether you wanted to get in involved in uh, fulfilling some of that, or or how you wanted to approach that that uh, pretty stick issue really? We thought about it, and we made the very conscious decision to stay out of that business. Yeah. Um, so right now, our artists do it themselves. And a lot of our artists are, are, are at a stage in their career where they can go to the post office once a week and, and kind of or their manager or someone on their team yeah. handles that themselves. Uh, we do have some, um, like there's, there's easy ways with email filters to automatically forward a transaction that happens on your Banzoogle powered store yeah. to whoever handles your fulfillment. So we do have a lot of them um, uh, working uh, with that. We uh, also have users that will just integrate a different store into their Banzoogle website or link out to that store. Yeah. So uh, artists are using uh, MyPlayDirect or um, or Big Cartel or Shopify even uh, can easily do that. We also have an integration with Topspin. So yeah. some of our users uh, just pull in their Topspin offers, uh, similar to what we just did with Bandcamp, where you can uh, Bandcamp is a little different because. Um, 
because it's a, the transaction fully happens on Bandcamp. Yeah. But same with Topspin. So if Topspin handles your fulfillment, you can add your Topspin offers to your Benzo website, and then Topspin Topspin is gonna handle e-commerce. Yeah. And sure. um, and for us, it's part of our approach. Like we we kind of like to say that we're an all-in-one solution where you can do it all from Banzugo. But if in specific cases you want to use best-of-breed solutions. Uh, like Topspin or Bandcamp or SoundCloud for your players or Bands in Town for your events, yeah. we make it extremely easy for you to do that as well. Great. And so uh, you were talking about the uh, Bandcamp uh, integration. Actually, last week we had a, a long uh, discussion on Bandcamp uh, with a couple of musicians that use that heavily. So uh, how did that come about and, and sort of did, did you feel like uh, it was a natural evolution for, for you to integrate the, the two platforms uh, or did you feel that bit of friction at the, at the beginning? Because, of course, you also offer the same option, but you don't make any money out of that. So really, it doesn't really matter to you guys. That's exactly it. I mean, yeah. um, and I heard that uh, I heard that uh, that episode uh, yesterday. Actually, it's great. It's a great discussion uh, about Thanks. Bandcamp and and and, and a direct fan in general. Um, well, the the reason why we and we actually convinced Bandcamp to work with us and uh, let us do that integration. I, I as a music fan, I, I'm a huge fan of Bandcamp. Yeah, I think they're building a great, um, like great tools both for musicians but also for fans to discover new music and and um, they have a lot of features like pre-sales and things like that that are very, that are somewhat advanced and uh, and 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 pretty pretty cool. So um, yeah, we do have. We have a significant number of our users that had their websites with Banzoogle and then also have a Bandcamp. And uh, either they had some tr some of their tracks on Banzoogle, some of their tracks on Bandcamp, yeah. or they would be in both places, and or they would use the Bandcamp widgets uh, on their Banzoogle website, which often kind of looked awkward. And um, yeah, so we and, and like you said, like, I think our business models are very complementary. Yeah. Because like the basic Bandcamp is free, but then Bandcamp uh, makes uh, makes a commission on your sales. So yeah, it just made sense for us to integrate. Let us let our users um, easily consolidate all their transaction, their sales and downloads with Bandcamp, uh, and also let any artist that that's already active on Bandcamp build a website in 10 minutes with yep. us because they can they don't have to re-upload their tracks they don't have to re-tag anything they can just pull their um, their music from Bandcamp we're actually working on doing the same with SoundCloud right now great Awesome. Yeah. And so, uh, talking about, uh, I wanted to uh, to ask you about uh, mobile uh, responsiveness. So it's, it's a feature that came up uh, on Banzoogle uh, uh, late last year, I think. Uh, uh, I just after you you launched the redesign, and uh, I wanted to ask you sort of how did you approach the mobile problem? Uh, of course, you haven't been around for a while. Did you ever think or get requests from your users that wanted native apps? Uh, and uh, did you ever come to sort of the crossroads of deciding whether uh, you wanted to? Uh, you know, get about building uh, native apps uh, or uh, mobile responsive uh, uh, websites. Of course, the, the latter uh, road seems to be the, the most uh, uh, the most successful in the sense that native apps uh, are kind of hard to maintain and, and a bit yeah. of a pain. Uh, but I was wondering if you ha if you had come to that decision and how do you, how do you make it essentially? It's uh, similar to your earlier question about fulfillment. It's, uh, right. it's something that we considered. We definitely had um, a good number number of requests for it, and we looked into it. And not to say that we won't ever do it, but it's um, it's an extremely complex um, endeavor to to go build, like, build native apps, make sure they get supported by all the mobile past and future uh, mobile OSs. Yeah. Um, so we decided to not work on that. At the same time, we kind of surveyed uh, surveyed uh, our our staff, our friends, and our users to say uh, like who who here has uh, specific artist apps on their phones. And very few had them, and then yeah. we asked who actually uses them, and almost no one uses them. So, so right now, if you're a band, unless you're a huge artist that's able to to kind of build a network of fans, yeah, I don't think it makes sense to invest in an app. It makes a lot more sense to invest in a good, simple, clean website that will be responsive for any device, yeah, and where everything works, where the 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 the, the, the calendar works, the music players works, the commerce works. And so that's what we decided to focus on. So Absolutely. we made sure, the first thing we did is we made sure that all our themes are 100% responsive and that's done. The next thing that we're doing now is making sure that our custom system is also 
percent responsive. It is now for features, but it isn't for layouts. Yeah. So uh, we're we're kind of redoing our custom system so that even the completely customized. Um, uh, website and themes will be fully responsive. So, yeah. uh, so that's that's our focus right now. If we end up building an app, it will be a Bansible app yeah. that would let you, you know upload photos and um, post updates, post uh, easily post um, new blog posts directly yeah. from your phone. That's that's I it's think it's something on, that on makes a, more on sense. On a band side, of course, it would it would make a lot of sense to facilitate yeah. that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I totally agree. I think you know. The, the one thing that was really advantageous of mobile apps was push notifications. But as I'm seeing that more and more news websites, for example, uh, on uh, on the Max, on the on the you know uh, OS X, uh, ask me to subscribe and then start notifying me in my notifications when there's an update. I feel like the same thing is going to come to mobile, and then it's kind of going to defeat the point of you know it's not going to be just apps that can give you push notifications but it might actually become websites too that are going to give you that so uh, in that sense i think you know it is going to evolve in that way i don't think people are going to bother too much with uh, i mean having access to stack features like uh like push notifications like the camera yeah and eventually eventually most phones will have billing information so your credit card is going to be uh, like i can see i can see the advantages if someone can buy it directly from you but you're right like at the same time the um, the mobile browsers there's more and more you can do with the browser and uh, and for now um i mean we're we're a website company so that's yeah. that's our focus for now we we're far from becoming an app company there's some great companies out there that do it and um we might at some point partner up with one of them sure but um, it's not our focus right now. Yeah, exactly, and it's, it's certainly something that may actually require to take you some funding up to hire a bunch of people to develop yeah. it. Also, it would it would be definitely an expensive endeavor. And, and I finally, wanted to ask you about sort of the, the evolution of the company for how you see it uh, evolving over the next couple of years. Uh, do, do you see anything uh, particularly of note that might change the way that you do business that's happening online, or the, you know, in the way that people are interactive with their fans? Uh, or are you actually, are you actually seeing uh, a migration back to uh, people's own websites, uh, uh, which would actually make it uh, e even more important for Banzoogle to continue in, in the way it's going? The more, um, like the more, the more that artists' online presence becomes fragmented, the more the website and the mailing list become important. Yeah. So as you know, as Facebook keeps evolving, and a lot, and a lot of bands remember all the efforts they put into MySpace a few years ago. Uh, that you know, kind of all all those results vanished um, after a few years. Yeah. Uh, Facebook keeps changing their terms, and uh, and 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 SoundCloud keeps changing. Like, and all of those are great platforms, but I think more and more people important that understand it's important to have a destination that they will own forever. Yeah. Uh, where they control the design, they control the narrative, uh, they control the cost of action, uh, where fans are one click away from signing up the mailing list, fans are one click away from vis visiting the store or the calendar. Uh, so it, it's actually helpful for us. So yeah. our, our, I mean, our strategy going forward is to is to definitely keep growing. Like we're, I, I still think in many areas of the music industry were, were kind of the best kept secret. Uh, like in, in, in genres like electronic music, we need to do more, we need to get yeah. you know better visibility. In outside of the US and Canada, uh, we need to get better visibility. One of our projects is to make our platform multilingual, so we want right. to start targeting Latin America and all of Europe. Um, one sheet is also a big part of our strategy going forward, like kind of grabbing that part of the market that might not need yet a full website, but still yeah. want to have a .com and a presence. And to be honest, we, we're also looking at um, kind of recreating Bandzoogle, but for other markets. Yeah. So actors, comedians, uh, kind of have the same basic needs as bands, so we're, we're looking at that right now, yeah. and and some other businesses, some other types of personalities and entertainers. Yeah, exactly. I mean, po podcasts. I would imagine that if somebody yeah. has just one podcast and they need a page, it, it is a, a pain now to to f work it all out. And I don't know that's the reason why a lot of people don't actually do it. But if there was a way to do it that easily, uh, even outside of the music. Uh, uh, 
uh, that music uh, vertical that that would be uh, definitely something that people would use and uh, no, it's, uh, it's you know it's it's, def it's it's a fun conversation to have because uh, I know a lot of musicians are looking at their options right now and are trying to work out uh, what is our best way forward and uh, you know, some of them end up on uh, platforms like WordPress, but then if you're not particularly technically savvy, you end up trapped into a million different things, upgrades, and and then the server goes down, and then things happen, and and it's it's, it's a bit of a nightmare really when you when you're hosting your own site if you don't know what you're doing. And so, uh, definitely great to see options like Banzoogle being about and uh, helping musicians that are not uh, that technically savvy uh, or that just well, don't want the hassle, don't want the hassle of having to 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 maintain their own site. That's the thing. It's both the, the, the technical savviness, it's having the time, actually having the time to take care of all of that, having the money or having the money to have someone uh, handle it for you. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, our, our, our job is to knock down the reasons, uh, like any reason for a musician not to use Banzuko for their website. I think we're, we're knocking them down one by one. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of the day, like, I... I, I like, I think we kind of live in a bubble. Like all of us, they're part of the music tech space yeah. where we, you know, we we might read um, uh, high bot and digital music news each day and check out the digital music trends, and uh, we forget that 85, 90 percent of musicians like don't know or care about any of this. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely our mission to empower those to use those tools and and control their own online presence because too many of them end up you know not doing it or giving control away to someone else and then they can't update their own websites yeah. they you know they, they can't they can't sell their music or you know build a mailing list um so yeah that's that's i guess that's our mission <laughs> awesome well uh david it was a real pleasure having you on today and thanks so much for your time and uh, uh once again it is uh, banzoogle.com or you can find them on twitter on at uh, banzoogle and uh, yeah ch check out the website even if you're not a musician just uh, to see what they are up to and uh, again thanks a lot for coming on thanks andrea that was a pleasure and thanks so much for listening to the dmt one to one show it comes out uh, every week pretty much uh, and uh, uh, you just you can find it on digitalmusictrends.com uh, and then click through to the one to one uh, link on the menu uh, if you're listening to the audio version of the show of course you can find the video version on youtube and also as a podcast and vice versa if you're listening to the uh, to the uh, video version but would like to be able to take it away and uh, listen to on the on the go while you're running or anything else you can find the audio version uh, pretty much everywhere including sound cloud uh, thanks so much for listening have a fantastic week and until uh, next time if you enjoyed watching or listening to the show and would like to find more head on to digitalmusictrends.com